October 19, 2023, three days after what would have been Barbara's 71st birthday. We are at Swan Point Cemetery on the east side of Providence, Rhode Island, not too far from where Barbara's mother grew up. We stand among the trees with the colors just about changing and overlooking the Seekonk River. If you stop for a moment and listen, you will hear a chorus of bird songs. This is truly a beautiful place. We are here today to inter the ashes of Barbara Katie McDevitt. Her remains will be placed beside her parents, her grandparents, and other Katie ancestors dating back to the mid 19th century when Amy spirit will be present here any more than the other places where she lived, worked, and played. Yet, this will still always be a special place. Rather than in any one place, I think all of us will find Barbara who are memories of her and her personal qualities that made her such a special person. She was kind. She was always willing to help. Several people uh, you know, commented that whenever Barbara came to an event, she would go up to the host to thank them and always ask, what can I do? With this question, the host knew that Barbara really wanted to help and wasn't just being polite. She was fun, but friends and colleagues told me again and again how much fun they had. They always found time to laugh, and her smile, it was enough to make you feel good all day. She was loyal. Most people have many friends. Barbara kept and nurtured those friendships. Her friends might have moved away, and in-person meetings became rare, but Barbara had moved beyond mere friendship to a higher plane altogether. She had become part of their family. She was there at the most happy times and celebrations, like weddings, and birthdays, and graduations. But more importantly, she was always with them at their lowest point, with work issues, family conflict, illness, and death. She would travel across the country or drive for three hours to be with a friend in crisis. Sometimes it was just to just being silent and holding their hand. She was brave. She was faced Norton serious health issues from birth, but she did not let it define her. When she was 16, not only did she move in the middle of her junior year in high school, she did it in a full body cast after back surgery. Uh, after college, she moved to Boston on her own without a job or even a place to live. At age 38, she quit a well-paying job in finance to finish her master's degree in education in hopes of getting a job in teaching. At age 40, she took a chance on me. <laughs> now to the interment. Uh, first, I'll show you one thing. Many of you have already seen this. This is the uh, container that contains Barbara's ashes. I call it Barbara's Beach Box, reflecting her love of Nosset Beach on Cape Cod, where we vacationed for 25 years. I am also including a few other items that represent uh, important parts of Barbara's life. These envelopes contain photographs of her family, friends, and me. These are the ashes of a beloved cat, Charlie. Mm -hmm.
This is a wood carving of one of our favorite birds, the black-capped chickadee. Barbara was a skilled knitter and made hundreds of baby sweaters, hats, and blankets. Those who own them should cherish them. I hope that some of those babies, now grown, will pass those sweaters on to their own babies. This is her final knitting project. Unfinished, with the yarn still on the needles. Robert loved to read, especially with her book club of former teachers. This is her Kindle. Robert always loved to talk to, to love to stay in touch with friends through phone calls, texting, and face Facebook. This is her cell phone. You may ask if these devices are fully charged. They are not. But I figure if Barbara is able to use them, she will figure out how to charge them. Most of you know that I love reading and talking about history, movies, and books. I have two stories to share. First, just behind me, about 100 feet to my left, is the grave of Sullivan Ballou. In July of 1861, Ballou, a major in the uh, Rhode Island Regiment during the Civil War, wrote to his wife, Sarah, as he and his troops waited in the countryside of Northern Virginia for a battle they knew was about to begin. He tells Sarah of the righteousness of the Union cause in his hope for their young sons. Finally, he tells her that if he dies in battle, she should know that he loves her and he will always be with her. And I quote from the letter, if there is a soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my breath. As the cool air fans your throbbing temple, it shall be my spirit passing by. Do not mourn me dead. Think I am merely gone. I will wait for thee, for we shall meet again. Now Solomon Ballou died a week later at the first battle of Bull Run. Secondly, a long time ago, most likely in the 1970s, I read a newspaper review of a novel written by that great Southern writer and poet Robert Penn Warren. The book was titled A Place to Come To. I can't tell you much about the book because I never actually read it. I just read the newspaper review which included a brief passage from the book. That one passage, that one scene from that novel struck me so deeply that I remembered it all those years to this day. In the scene, the book's main character, whose young wife had just died, brought her body back to her small hometown to be buried in her family plot. He is sitting with his wife's father after the burial in the older man's living room. The father tells the younger man, my son, you will go into the world and do what Agnes would want you to do and believed you would do, but after the dust and the heat settles, you, my son, may want to come to this quietness in a place will always be kept waiting for you by her side. You will have a place to come to. I never knew why that scene, those words from a book I never actually read stayed with me all of those years. Now I know. In closing, listen to the rustle of the leaves and the songs of the birds. Imagine Barbara, who those birds are speaking to us. Be kind.
smile. Be loyal to your friends, especially when all others have abandoned them. Be brave. We were lucky to have had Barbara in our lives. May that thought bring us peace. Honey, I still miss you. I will always love you. Thank you. And now I ask that I'm going to put a red rose for passion into the uh, into the into the grave, and I ask all of you to take a pink rose, which means uh, friendship, and do that as well. Thank you.